So now we've looked at our queries, what we're going to do next is look at our commands. And the first command handler that we're going to create is the create command. So let's head back over to Solution Explorer again. And in the activities folder, I'm going to create another new class. And this one I'm going to call create. And this is going to be a command. So once again, similar to how we create a query, I'm just going to create a class or a nested class inside the create class. And this one's going to be called command. And once again, this is going to be of using the I request interface from mediator. The difference with this one is we're not actually returning anything from our command. I say that we are going to return something because our API controllers will need to know if the request has been successful. But we're not actually going to return an activity entity from this command. Now when we create an activity, we're going to need the activity properties. And in this particular case, we're going to need all of them. So I'm just going to open up the activity in our domain. And I'm just going to copy all of these properties into my clipboard and go back to my create class and just paste them inside the command and just reformat. And I'll also bring in system for the GUID and the date time. Now I mentioned earlier that we're using a GUID so that our client can actually create the ID. And because we're not returning anything from this particular request, our clients will be able to tell the location of the resource because it's generating the ID itself. Now, technically, we could just return the ID from this particular command. But for this particular example, I'm just going to use the client side generated GUID for the ID of what we're creating here. So this is going to be what's contained in our command object. And what we can do is we can create a handler and say public class handler. And once again, this is going to be an I request handler. And we just pass in the command as it's type in here. And once again, we're just going to create the implement the interface, the I request handler interface. And if we take a look at this, even though we're not returning anything, we're still returning something called a mediator unit. Now this mediator unit doesn't really do anything. It's really just an empty object that we're going to be returning from this particular command. But let's flesh this out in our and let's add our handler logic so that we can demonstrate what we're doing here. So I'm just going to generate the constructor for the handler and I'm going to pass in data context just as we have been doing in our other handlers and I'm going to bring in persistence and I'm going to initialize the field from parameter just as I've been doing it before. And we'll also make this an async method. And in the handler logic, what we want to do here is say var activity is equal to a new activity. And then we need to populate the properties of our new activity from what we're receiving from our request. So we're going to map these manually. And this isn't the way we're going to be doing it all throughout this building this application. But in order to keep things as simple as possible right now, we will manually map these properties from the ID to the request ID, from the title to the request dot title, then the description equals request dot description. Then the category is going to be equal to the request dot category. The dates will be equal to request dot dates. The city will be request dot city. And the venue will be request dot venue. And then what we need to do is add this activity to our context. So I'm going to say context.activities.add and then pass in the activity. Now you might be wondering why I didn't use the async version of add in this case. And there is an async version. And if I just type async, we'll see the description for add async. And this begins, and if we look at the description, it says this begins tracking the given entity 
etc etc and if we look at further down it says this method is async only to allow special value generators such as the one used by Microsoft Entity Framework Core SQL Server Value Generation Strategy Sequence High Low to access the database asynchronously and for all other cases the non-async method should be used. So since we're not using a special value generator then we should use the non-asynchronous method for this, for this particular method. So with that in place what we can do next is we can say await and context and save changes async. But what we also want to know is has this been successful? And the save changes async method will return a task of integer. And this integer will basically be the number of changes saved into our database. So what we want to do is we want to create a variable called success and we'll set this equal to the result of what this returns and we want this to be a boolean so we'll say if the save changes async returns greater than zero then we'll consider this successful because our activity will have been added into our database because that's what we're tracking inside our context. If save changes is zero that means nothing's been saved to our database and we'll know that our request to add a new activity has failed. So what we'll do we'll say if the request is successful so we'll say if request then what we'll return is units.value and like I say this is just an empty object but it does mean that we're returning to our API controller and that means our request is successful and our API controller when it receives this empty object is going to return a 200 OK response. If the request was unsuccessful then what we'll do is we'll throw a new exception and we'll just say problem saving changes and this is what we need for our command handler. Now let's head back to our activities controller and we'll create a new method that will allow us to create a new activity. And to create an entity or a resource we use HTTP POST and we don't need to give this any root parameters. And if we use an HTTP POST against API slash activities then we're creating a new resource. So what we'll do is we'll say public async task and again we'll stick with using action result for our API methods and this time we'll just return units and we'll call it create and we'll need to pass in what we're receiving in the body of the request and in this case it's going to be create.command and we'll call it command. Now our new activity is going to be sent up in the body of the request but because we're using the API controller attributes this means our API controller is smart enough to know where to look for the objects that the create command needs and it's going to match against the properties that we're sending up when we create a new activity. Now if we were not using the API controller attributes then what we would need to do is specify from body and this would give our controller a hint about where to look for the properties that we're sending up as part of this request but we don't need to use this this should work without adding that particular attribute to our parameters here and what we want to do then is we want to say return await mediator.send and then we can pass up our command and this is all we need to do for our API method what we can do next is head back over to Postman and we can take a look and see if this was successful. Now in our module 4 folder we've got a post for create activity and this is going to be an HTTP post against localhost 5000 API activities and in the body here what we have is the properties that we're going to send up to create a new activity. Now a couple of things to point out here. First of all we're using 
a special postman object called GUID and this dollar GUID is going to create a GUID for our ID. The other thing to point out is we're using a variable for our, for our activity date and postman we're able to use a, a pre-request script to create this activity date and let's just take a look at what's inside here and what we're doing in this case is postman can use the moment JavaScript library and what we're doing inside here is using postman environment sets to set an activity date which we then use inside our request and we're saying that this moment this activity date is moments or today's dates and we're adding 14 days and we're sending this up as an, an ISO string and this will allow us to create a date that's 14 days in advance from now and the rest of it is just normal strings that match the properties of our activity entity so what we should find is if we click send this should be created and we'll get a 200 OK response back and we do and if I go ahead and get the activities then we should find that we have an additional activity in our list called test creates activity and if I copy the ID and I just go to get the activity and overwrite the previous GUID and click send then we get the new details of our newly created activity so our create command is working excellent now creating handlers inside our application folder is pretty easy to do but you're probably thinking that there's a little bit more boilerplate code here than there would be if we were just using a repository if you're familiar with the repository pattern and you would be correct and that is one of the downsides to using this particular pattern so what I want to do next is is take a look at a way that we can deal with boilerplate code and make it a little bit easier to deal with as we're writing our handlers and we'll take a look at that next